regions of our fair kingdom, there sits in a little village in the midst of a very fair and fertile valley. Strangers are almost never seen there, and even regular visitors to this valley are few and far between. One of the few who regularly made trips to this place was a monk by the name of Father Christopher. He was a round, jolly, red-headed rascal with a quick wit and a tongue which people said was made not of silver, but of pure burnished gold. Indeed, when he began his orations, there was nary a bard in the land who could match him for eloquence. Consequently, he was well liked wherever he went. Now he had come to this village, and one Sunday morning at the end of mass, Brother Christopher told the people, good sons and daughters, as you know, I am dispatched to this valley on a regular basis to collect the tithes and little gifts that you are accustomed to give our patron Saint Anthony. Now knowing your great devotion to this saint and your faith in God who watches over and protects you and yours, I will be at the church tonight to collect the offerings that you will bring and because of your great faith and devotion, I shall show you a most rare and wondrous relic, a feather from the wings of the archangel Gabriel which was left in the Virgin's room after the Annunciation. Now among the faithful at the church that morning were two young men named James and Brian. Both were good friends of the monk, and they had resolved to have some fun with him and play a trick with him with regard to this feather. Knowing that he was to dine that day with the Lord of the Valley and his family after Mass, they made their way to the inn where Brother Christopher and his servant were staying. Brother Christopher had a manservant who some called Jacob the Pig and some Jacob the Whale and most called Jacob the Mess, a most crude, coarse individual indeed. Brother Christopher was wont to say of him, my servant has a half dozen qualities that were any one of which found in the holiest of the saints of heaven. He would be judged unfit to reside in that glorious place and be cast out at once. Imagine then having a man with not just one, but six such qualities. When asked what they were, he would recite, well, he's a lazy, lying, dishonest, filthy, lecherous drunkard, as well as having a number of other bad points of best not mentioned in polite company. And because he has a great greasy black beard, he thinks himself incredibly handsome and believes every woman who sees him falls in love with him at once. Left to himself, he would chase them like a cock in a hen house until he collapsed from exhaustion. Now, Brother Christopher had instructed his servant to keep an eye on the items in their room, especially the saddlebag with the holy relics. But Jacob the Mess, fonder of kitchens than ever a nightingale of green boughs, had already spied the in-serving girl, a plump little creature with a pair of pants like market baskets. <laughs> For all that it was August, he took a seat by the fire and began to woo the girl, declaring himself to be a gentleman of money and property who would marry her and deliver her from the wretchedness of a life of working with others. This all done without regard to the eloquent testimony of his calf, with a brim greasy enough to see half the kettles in Dublin, his much patched and stained doublet, and well-worn boots with the ragged laces and decidedly thin soles. Well, James and Brian were very happy to see Jacob thus occupied, for it meant that half their work was done they immediately stole into the brother's room, and there they found, wrapped in a length of silk, an elaborately carved box. They opened the box and found within the most beautiful feather in shades of blue and green and gold. Now, even in these educated and well-civilized land, a peacock's feather, for peacock it was, is considered a rare and wondrous bird. And in that little hamlet, so far from civilization in general, well, it's doubtful.
doubtful that anyone even heard of such a creature, let alone <coughs> seen one. Well, at any rate, they soon deduced this was the holy feather and decided to make off with it. But just so that the good brother would not be left with nothing to show the people, they took some coals to the fireplace, put them in the box, closed it up, and wrapped it up with silk, just like before. Now that evening, all the church bells sounded, and the people came from all over the valley to see the wondrous feather. So many came that they filled the church, and latecomers were obliged to stand in the churchyard and wait there for a glimpse. At last, Brother Christopher stepped to the altar bearing the precious casket. After leading the faithful in a number of prayers, he unwrapped the silk, opened the box, and saw the coals. Inwardly, he chided himself for leaving the care of such a precious object to a fool like Jacob. But there was nothing to be done. Schooling his features, he took a deep breath, turned around, and faced the congregation. Good sons and daughters of God, rejoice, he declared. For I have an item of great value that I must show you. Now you know that I am accustomed to going on missions for the church. I travel about, and as I do, I have acquired a number of rare and wondrous relics, such as the archangel's feather, which I have told you about. Another of my relics is a handful of the coals over which the martyr Saint Lawrence was tortured. I keep the feather so it will not be damaged in a wooden box, and the coals for the same reason in another. The two boxes look so much alike that I sometimes mistake one for another, which is what has happened today. But as I think on it, this is not a mistake, for I recall that the Feast of St. Lawrence is but four days hence. Clearly, God has wished me to remind you of your devotion to his holy servants. So, my friends, step forward and touch the coals over which this holy body was roasted, and be assured that anyone thus blessed shall for the next year not be touched by fire without his feeling it. <laughs> well, those words, <laughs> the entire congregation surged forward, eager to be so blessed. Brother Christopher made the largest crosses he could on the men's cloaks and the women's shawls and veils, all the while assuring them that come sunrise the next day, the colts would restore themselves as they had so often before. After the services and the collections, James and Brian came up bearing the feather. <laughs> the good brother held no ill will and received back his property thankfully, which earned him just as many offerings as the colts had gotten him on this one. Oh, no.